What's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing reviews and previews of um, what we did in each position for the New York Giants. Today we're going to be discussing quarterbacks and running backs. Um, quarterbacks, so, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Eli Manning coming back uh, should have a better season than he did last year, which is going to be hard to top for him. And the season before that, which was very, you know, underrated. So, um, he's coming back with some good players now, man. Rashad Jennings looks like he found his, you know, found his comfort zone in the backfield. Um, you got Odell Beckham, Victor Cruz, hopefully he's healthy. Sterling Shepard, and an electric Dwayne Harris wide receiver. Um, you know, I was very impressed with what Dwayne Harris did. For us. So I think, you know, we're going to see more four wide receiver sets and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But, you know, Eli Manning has, you know, probably has had, you know, has the, the best talent that he's had in a few years now. So ever since the Super Bowl run. So, yeah, he's, he's this team's getting better, man. His offense is getting better. But, um, yeah, let's move on to Ryan Nassib. Um, he's going to be fighting for um, a backup role with B.J. Daniels, um, a mobile quarterback from Seattle. But um, I don't think we don't have a, a really a need for a um, a mobile quarterback. It all depends if he does well in the pocket, which is going to be hard to top because Ryan Nassib, um, he is he when he's given the opportunity, he has impressed. I mean. I can't wait to see what he's going to do in the preseason. In the regular season, when he does get his chances, he's 9 of 10 for 128 yards. Yards. That is a 12.8 average, which is a first down every every throw. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what he's going to do in the preseason because if, you know, God forbid if Eli, fall, Eli goes down, I mean, you know, us Giants fans are used to seeing Eli out there. But, you know, something happens like, 2013, the last game of the season, what happened to Eli? He sprained his ankle. You know, Ryan Nassib, Ryan Nassib has to step in and, and, you know, win the game. We were already winning in it anyway, but when he gets his opportunities, it's, you know, he he possesses it. And what he did against Minnesota, I, I know people don't think anything of it, but I think he showed what he can do against Minnesota last year. Um and, and that was with scrubs. I was with like Matt Lacoste, Ben Edwards, you know, Miles White, and stuff like that. The starters weren't even out there. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the running backs. Yeah, so quarterback's going to be really quick. You, we already know how that's going to play out. We're not like, you know, the Cleveland Browns right now. So, um, the running back situation Rashad Jennings coming back. Looks like he found his home in that backfield. Um, can't wait to see what he's gonna do. Um, you know, I'm just hoping he doesn't get injured. I think this is his first season ever that he's ever played 16 games in one season. I believe it is, and that's. Pretty, I mean, I hope it stays like that. But he's 31 years old now, guys. So we gotta find a replacement for his, for him soon. You know, next year. Whoo! Next year. Next year's draft is filled with running backs. Can't wait for that. Um, moving on to Andre Williams, listen, man, if he doesn't, listen, if he, if I was the coach or GM, whoever's making the, the ultimate decision right now, give him two preseason games. If he d make, let him start the second one, give Rashad Jennings his, you know, his, his fair share, let him start in the, in the preseason game, the first one, Andre Williams should start the second one, see what he can do against the top talent, um, if he doesn't produce in, in any of those two games, cut him. Just let him go. He just, there's too too many, too many negative plays for him. So uh, the negative, you know, really outweighs the positive, and he's just not worth it anymore. So um, let him go. Shane Vereen, he's a lock to be with the running back. So um, hopefully we use him more. Hopefully we line him up wide more. Hopefully he comes back from the from the running back position and runs a swing, um, you know, a, a wheel route, a more wheel routes because that's what they did in, with the Patriots. I seen him run so many wheel routes and you know Tom Brady actually throwing to him, 
And, um, you know, he can be really productive like that. And I actually don't mind him taking more handoffs. He does have better vision and better, you know, um, better at, you know, overall running the football than most of these running backs guys. So, right, most of these running backs, he's he's ran less than Andre Williams and has, like, almost double his yards last year, I pretty, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, that's, that's how you know Andre Williams is not worth the pick anymore. Um... Moving on, we got Orleans Darkwa, who I am so excited. Guys, <clears throat> Giants fans, just hope and pray that they don't cut him. I really, really like Orleans Darkwa. I mean, guys, we need to keep Orleans Darkwa. I really hope we do because, I mean, if 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 Rashad Jennings retires next year after this season, which may happen because he'll be 32 next season, Orleans Darkwa, I really, if we don't get a first round running back next year, which is a possibility because we got a lot of running backs next year, I think he could start, guys. I mean, I this is not a bold prediction. I really think he could start. This is not anything I'm throwing out there just to, you know, throw some eyes at me. I'm serious. Like, he can start. And um, given the opportunities, he's proven it. And he's a, he's a different bra he's a different back, man. He's a power back with speed, a lot of speed, and on top of that, he's a very shifty uh, um, running back, and his vision, his vision is the best from any of these running backs we have. His vision is so, he reminds me of Le'Veon Bell with his vision. I mean, that, that's how much I really think he has such good bit of ball carrying vision. Um, and he makes the most out of every yard. He fights for extra yards no matter what. Um, moving on, we've got Bobby Rainey. I really don't see a use for him. He's a kick returner and punt returner. Um, he's all right carrying the football, but he's nothing more spectacular than the than the guys we got now. So he's just there to fill in a roster spot, get some competition going. Um, he has made his name known nonetheless, but he, he's just not what we need right now. Um, I would have been happy with him if we didn't draft Paul Perkins, if we didn't have you know a, a Rashad Jennings, you know. If we didn't have Marshawn Copper, who I'll get to you later, but um, we don't need Orleans Darqua right now. I mean, whoa! Don't I, I'm sorry. We don't we don't need Bobby Rainey right now. Woo! But um, yeah. Moving on to our fifth round draft pick, Paul Perkins. Um, I can't wait to see what he's gonna do. I mean, he is he's gonna be our Shane Vereen if Shane Vereen decides to either leave after his contract expires or you know retire or whatever. Um, but he he was a leading receiver and leading rusher for UCLA last year, which is, I mean, that's very impressive in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. I mean, um, in the regular season, he might not get too much carries because we do have our running back, you know, situation is very, you know, loaded right now, very, you know, um, stuffed and crowded. So, um, yeah, we'll see what... Um, Paul Perkins uh, provides us. So, moving on to Marshawn Copperich. He was one of the guys that a lot of people were talking about coming out, coming into the draft. That he can be a draftable player. And he's one of these guys that if he does fall into free agency, that people will get him and he will be an absolute steal for them. Um, we do have a lot, of running, or a lot of running backs. If we didn't have so much depth at running back, I would be completely on board with putting him on the 53-man roster. Um, I he reminds me of a Rashad Jennings. He really does. Um, if you guys see the way he kicks it to the outside, his agility, it's not he doesn't have much agility, but it's there. His breakout speed, just like Rashad Jennings. I mean, Rashad Jennings has some very deceiving speed. I mean, when he hits the open field, you're you're not going to catch him anymore. I mean, he the way he runs is very smooth, just like Marshawn Copperich. So, um, he is, in my opinion, a you know a very similar running back to Rashad Jennings, but does have his own flair and his own touch to it. So, um, so let's put this all together. Let's mash it all up and see what our depth chart, what I project our depth chart to look at. Quarterbacks. I think we're just going to keep two quarterbacks. We've only had two for the past two years. So this year shouldn't be any different. Um, so it's just going to be Eli Manning and Ryan Nassib. Running backs. Um, are, I would like 
you know, we're probably going to keep four running backs. That's five is a little too much. I get that we have so much talent there. I would I would love to have five if we had a 54 man roster, but we have a 53 man roster, so we can't keep too much than we need. So um, I would like Rashad Jennings, Orleans Darkwa. This is my death chart, by the way. Rashad Jennings, Orleans Darkwa, Shane Vereen, and uh, Paul Perkins. Okay. Um, Marshawn Copperidge, I think he's a lock to make the practice squad. If anyone deserves to be on the practice squad, well, that's if he shows anything during training camp. There could be, you know, he could be a complete scrub, and, you know, we might not even know it. But, um, yeah, I think if he shows what he what he did in college, um, I think he could definitely make the practice squad. So, and that means letting go of Bobby Rainey and Andre Williams. Now, you may say, how can we put... Marshawn Copperich in the on the practice squad and not Andre Williams. Well, we just don't need him anymore. What do we need him for? For a one yard gain? Do you want to put him in third and ones? Is that only what you need him to do on the on the second and ones and third and ones and occasionally a fourth and one? Is that what you want him to do? Because that's all the yards he's getting you. So he can't catch the ball and none of that. So we need to let go of him. Um, so yeah, four running backs, one on the practice squad so far. So far that I know. We can put Bobby Rainey on the practice squad too, but I think I think he's getting paid too much to be um, on the practice squad. He is he has made his name known in the NFL, and he's a pretty productive back, so he's not going to be on the practice squad. If he doesn't make the team, he's going to be cut. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Next up, we're going to do wide receivers, and then the, after that, we're going to do tight end. I'm going to start off with the offense first, so... Yep, I'll see you guys later. And, by the way, fullbacks, since they are running backs. Fullbacks, um, Nikita Whitlock. We might have two fullbacks on, this, on the team. Nikita Whitlock has been said that they, he, he might get more defensive snaps. Will Johnson, I think he's going to be our, our, our fullback now. He has better pass protection, better run blocking, which is what we need. And he can catch the ball out of the, out of the backfield. He has two, over 230 yards receiving as a fullback, so... Uh, and he is mixed with a tight end. He's, he also can play tight end, so I'm very excited to see what he's going to do there. So, yeah, that's everything, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video, probably in the tomorrow or um, tomorrow or Friday. See you guys later. Bye.